Shock jock Don Imus recently passed. Rest in peace, sir. And with that being, you know, rather relevant at the moment, I want to look back at the controversy with the Rutgers women's basketball team. Because in 2007, he made some comments that basically were true, <laughs> but he got a ton of backlash. So we're going to go through this and I will be intervening with my thoughts. Let's go. Our top story tonight, the whole country is buzzing following Don Imus's comments on his radio show about the Rutgers University women's basketball team. Oh, some rough girls from Rutgers, man. They got tattoos and some hardcore hoes. That's, that's some nappy-headed hoes there. So that was the statement that got him in a ton of trouble. And the deal is that I would gander to say that when we're speaking just baseless, just just on uh, at a base level, right? I was watching those um, those uh, women's those women's finals and rooting for Rutgers because you know Jersey and all, but he wasn't wrong. <laughs> he wasn't wrong at all. He was wrong on the whole part because you know who the hell knows anybody's sexual history. But as far as like you know the whole nappy headed thing, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. But I see the I see that the media took the, the see. Hold on. This is a big part of the reason why I tend to take the um, idea that black women are these victims as a bit of a joke because you see how quickly and how ferociously um, everyone came to the defense of these young ladies. So let's keep going. I must apologize for the comments at length on his radio show this morning. 11 seconds. I'm sorry I did that. Uh, I'm embarrassed that I did that. I did a bad thing. Did you, though? You were making a joke. You were laughing around with your coworkers. Deal is, is that this one in particular, like, I'm pretty sure he's probably said worse in his past. And much like the Rick Ross situation where they were like, oh, my goodness, Rick Ross talked about date forced entry in a song when it's been in music for the longest of time. So the re so but I really do believe that there is a reason that they came down so hard on Dynamis. And just give me a moment. But I'm a good person. And then this afternoon, Imus appeared on the Reverend Al Sharpton's radio program to explain himself and made some more comments that some people say could be just as bad as the original one. It's like the old country song, God may forgive you, but I won't. Jesus may love you, but I don't. No, no, we so are I, don't, I can't get any place with you people, no, 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 no. but you I can people, get someplace with Jesus. <laughs> you people? Oh, no. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> Why is that so triggering? Can anyone answer that for me? Like, why is you people so triggering? Because it, like, particularly if you're dealing with a certain, uh, with a with a set of people, I mean, it's so bland and so generic. It's not like, yo, like, I can't get anywhere with you monkeys. Like, if he said something like that, like, yeah. Um, but you people, and then is in no way dehumanizing. But as you can, as you know, he's on Al Sharpton, who is the world's greatest race hustler, and so with this. I, like how do I put it? Because uh, like it feels as if the the wheels have been turning for a real long time and churning, and creating this narrative of black female victimization. And in this instance, in two thousand and seven, I was in California in two thousand and seven, so this wasn't like high priority for me at by any stretch of the imagination. But it really seems as if there is something else afoot. Who, who, who is you people, Mister? No, you and this woman I'm talking to. And just a short time ago, CBS Radio announced that Imus has, in fact, been suspended from his radio show for two weeks. Also, NBC News suspended their television simulcast of Imus' program. President of NBC, Steve Kappas, released the following statement. Quote, beginning Monday, April 16th, MSNBC will suspend simulcasting the syndicated Imus in the Morning radio program for two weeks. Now, this comes after careful consideration in the days since his racist, abhorrent comments were made. 
Don, Don Imus has expressed profound regret and embarrassment and has made a commitment to listen to all of those who have raised legitimate expressions of outrage. In addition, his dedication, in his words, to change the discourse on his program moving forward has confirmed for us that this action is appropriate. Our future relationship with Imus is contingent on his ability to live up to his word. Now, I pose this question. Is it racist if it's true? First and foremost, I don't see the one of the um, markers for racism that I've tried to set on this channel is, you know, are you speaking as are you speaking in a superiority, inferiority context based around your race? His comments were not made in that context in an inferiority, superiority. He was making an observation. And so I really I'm finding it hard to call the comments themselves racist because they were mostly true. Now, the whole part, once again, don't know, um, don't know the whole facts on the chick. Right. But <laughs> as far as them being nappy headed, yeah, their hair was really rough. They had tattoos. They, they were definitely of the more masculine variety. And I can't help but feel that. Particularly now when we have all these uber masculine, but not really masculine at all, uh, females, particularly running around the urban demographics, like one has to wonder, was this a, was this a big part of the reason why he received such backlash for that? Because, hey, yeah, we like th those in power would want the, actually wanted to push forward that narrative of, you know, oh yeah, b black women and black men, yeah, they're completely interchangeable. They're the exact same thing. And, you know, oh, these black girls, yeah, if they want to be dudes, yeah, we can make them think that they're dudes. Like, it, it made, I can't help but feel, with hindsight being what it is, because it's been 13 years uh, since this incident, that that may have played a big part of the reason why he caught so much crap. But let's continue. Joining us now with more on this developing story is Dr. Mark Lamont. Dr. Mark Lamont? That's Mark Lamont Hill from Twitter, but that's all I really know him from. <laughs> he just sits there and cries on Twitter about, like, you know, black victimization. He's, he's one of those. He gets paid to be a victim. Let's keep going. Hill of Temple University, radio talk show host, nationally. Okay, seriously, this guy looks like um, Michael, Michael Irving a little bit. <laughs> the look on his face, like, come on, bruh. Come on, bro. Like, I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. Dedicated Armstrong Williams and right here in our New York studio, comedian. A legend, an icon, rest in peace, Patrice O'Neill. This guy is hilarious and I mean, so hilarious that Amy Schumer even stole some of his jokes, all right? But he always comes from one of the real, well, he always came past tense once again god bless the dead uh he always came um from one of the more logical and rational based uh lines of thinking out there it's a big part of the reason why you know there is a black philip cult or the cult of black philip radio personality patrice o'neill all right what's did, up how you doing welcome welcome back good to see you, how you, doing? How you doing? <laughs> did, did the cbs and nbc do the right thing no what are they accomplishing after two weeks and what are they accomplishing what are y'all what are y'all trying Go to after him. Thank you. It, it, like, uh, it, seriously, like, what's the point? What is the goal? Well, uh, Brother O'Neill, I think I just kind of nipped the nail on a nail on the head. They wanted that, like, they didn't want that um, image being shamed. They didn't want that image being questioned. No, yes, by all means, these black women, oh, no, they, they are as empowered as anyone else. I mean, come on, let's be real about it. That's what the main goal was, was to, per was to uh, propagate the image of the masculine black female, quote unquote. <laughs> I don't understand where you, you, this is going. And, and so, no, sir, you don't find anything wrong with those comments? It, it's something wrong with the comments, but you act like like Don Imus and, and uh, Kramer are like malignant spots, but the whole country... Yeah, uh, this was also during the time that Kramer from Seinfeld went on stage and said the N-word and it, everybody, or N-word, as I like to call it, and everybody lost their mind on him too. And so when you, we sit here and you play that victim narrative in, 20, uh, in 2019, I'm not here to listen to it because there is all, there's been these instances throughout the course of my life where you had the media just come all to the defense of all these black folks and come to find out 
maybe they shouldn't have been getting defended. I mean, you got to see the Crystal Kaiser stuff. You got to see the Sinsuya Brown stuff. It, it, maybe there's been this coddling of certain demographics because it gets because there's a profit to be made out of that the continued um the continued uh idea of oppression towards these individuals or this group not the individuals but the group you i'm not I'm just, i didn't even give you my opinion yet. white people i know what your opinion white is John. People. yes it, and that that whole thing you read was all like the abhorrent it, it, uh, uh, oh, that's what nbc said that's no, the black is saying that that's because they that whole lot of adjectives, right? And that's what that they, that's what they do. They sit there, slap all these adjectives on these um in these articles, and make it seem like if you guys watch the uh the the AIU video that I did or the video that I did off top when it came to Crystal Kaiser, just to use it as the most recent example, um you know they were using all these different adjectives to describe and to elicit a feeling of oh. How dare from um from the reader and that's how they've been playing us that's one of the many games that the media is just mwah, they're fantastic at playing word that's because those comments were bored and the and, and the reason why we have to we have to dun, 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 captain save home <laughs> hold on he's about to say something really stupid though defend these young women is because no one else will the reason why we have to he, the reason we have to defend these women is because no one else will. Bruh, CBS just like basically fired the dude. Like he he was ostracized for this, but no one else will. That's bullshit. Pardon my French. Punished on I'm is is because if we don't stand out and speak, stand up and speak out, no one else will. And comments. What? Uh, no one else will. Oh my goodness, I'm such a revolutionary. What's he a doctor? What you got that doctorate in, my dude? I'm, I'm very curious. Not, not, I'm not curious enough to go looking, but I'm like, what is that doctorate in? Well, this will allow, hey, will, be, hey, do, will do, we continue to be Dr. mainstream Hill, hang on, sir. space. Well, what if this was your daughter who worked so hard, reached the championship, and some... That is such a bullshit line. What if... It's not my daughter. Okay, my daughter. I'm gonna try to raise to be some. To try, try to raise to be a decent wife and mother. Okay, plain and simple. But it's not my daughter. How about we stop with the hypotheticals and deal with what is in the reality of the situation? Is that yeah, they was out there looking rough and rugged, and that's why it was actually pretty funny what he said. Dopey radio host says something like that. You you wouldn't like it. First of all, have you had any of those girls on? I what, do you think, them, huh? what do you think? And, 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 I have uh, a comment. They've, they've commented to NBC in New York and they're of furious. Course, that, ain't, that ain't the real. Those are their words. Th that's, what, what do you think they really said when they heard that? They didn't go, oh, that's outrageous. They went, I know he didn't call me no nappy headed hoe. That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what they said. They say nappy headed hoe. That's what they said. That the was, they wasn't outraged. Yeah, but 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 we can't we can't we can't because it's the language that the, it's a, the language from the environment of which they came. That's why they weren't outraged. That they they pretend to be outraged. They, they're outraged because a Caucasian man said it, which is ultimately as racist as 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 the as what they're perceiving his statements to be. It's our indignation on those eight young women. It's quite possible because of the way black women are treated in America that they were used to hearing such things. This is 2007, guys, and here we are in 2019. And how many videos have I done about everything and its mother and um, disproportionately affecting black women? Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> and guys like this, Mark Lamont Hill, are still out there pushing that same narrative. And it's like, at some point... You just gotta cut it out, like I like I said. Um, Hattie McDaniel's, well, uh, she got she got Oscar, uh, an Oscar nomination, first black woman to be um, uh, nominated for an Oscar, and she wasn't able to go win. But guess what? Since then, t they they they've been over flooding. They've been overcompensating. Or um, like two two seven, or or um, interracial interracial marriage. It was a black woman and a white man. Come on, guys, cut cut it out. Like seriously, like just just cut out this narrative. That oh my goodness. Because you are a part of a group, you are a victim, or there is some victim, or, or just there, there's an entire victim narrative that is, uh, it seems, internal, eternally locked in with a with certain groups. But it's still inappropriate. We cannot allow our own dignity to be assaulted in that way without a response. What do you mean, we, bruh? 
like that's the thing that irritates me is that collectivist ideology, that that collectivist mindset that oh because something happened to this person over here that affects me in some way, shape, or form. When in reality, no, not really. I mean, t it, it, like intangibly and um. So, like in the, in the abstract, yes. In the abstract, I actually do believe that there is uh, that there are you know like stereotypes exist for a reason, right? But in the literal sense, nah, not really. You kind of got to take it with a grain of salt, one case at a time. In this instance, there is no we. These ladies were on national television. They knew they was on national tele television. They were very unkempt. And thusly, the comment was made. And instead of sitting there saying, okay, yeah, bet that's reality. No, what the media did was they took the opportunity to completely lamb lambast this man and, you know, and, and cause some, uh, uh, cause a lot of um, uproar and ruckus behind it. You know, shoot, maybe that's part of the energy that got um, a, a Barack Obama elected a year later, right? I, I mean, <laughs> it's gotten weird, man. And and my, my my response doesn't hinge upon those eight young women who were disrespected. Uh, Even right, well, hey, 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 Doctor Hill, let me ask you this. All right, so he is yeah. he admits it was wrong, outrageous. These are his words, not mine. Over the yeah. top. He has apologized. He's promised to make good. He's now been suspended. Should he be? Are you saying you want him fired? Absolutely. I think. And this is why folks like this should not be speaking. Like like I. I I, I can't stop anyone from saying, from having an opinion or saying what they want to say, but I do feel like you can't take folks like this seriously. Oh, absolutely, he should be suspended for saying a true statement. Miss me. Miss me. This is like Mark Lamont Hill's like Al Sharpton 2.0. But I think we've run this video long enough, and I think I've made my point rather clear. Sorry, uh, brother with the, with the screw face at the bottom right there. <laughs> You know, you're not going to particularly uh, get a word in on this video, but all the internet stuff, man. If you like to toss it, like, dislike, go ahead, do that too. Nobody's scared of you. Sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice and you want to get videos like this every single day. Share because sharing is caring and YouTube and bitch you and like aren't the biggest fans of your boy over here. Bang the bell for notifications and speak. Let me know. What do you think in the comments? I mean, it's that victim narrative, like from the color purple, man, to... To, to right now with the, the table talks and everything else like that, it's always, but particularly when it comes to the quote unquote sisters, some victim narrative where she has no responsibility and no accountability whatsoever. What is what Don Imus said? Blue? Yeah, of course. But isn't that his job to be blue as the uh, shock jock? Because I didn't listen to Don Imus coming up. Um, like I was, my family was in church all the time. So it was always gospel music. I didn't listen to a lot of talk radio. I actually didn't get into talk radio until like uh, probably like right before I really stopped paying attention to sports. But I would listen to sports, Mike and Mike in the morning. I'm um, like that. But either ways, guys, if you disagree, that's what I have a comment section for, because I'm really curious, like here we are, hindsight being what it is, I, maybe the, uh, I, I can't help but feel like this was taken out of proportion, but it was taken out of proportion on purpose in order to propagate the idea of the masculinized black American woman. But you may feel differently. That's what I have a comment section for. Until the next one.